had this not have happened? Do you think, like, what would our path have been? Like, what we have done different? So it's like, if Judas hadn't have betrayed Jesus, like, sold Jesus out or threw on the bus, do you think that would have played out different? Like, how would Jesus still end up on the cross? At that, like, maybe at, not at that particular time, maybe like a later time, not at all possible. I like how you ask questions and give multiple question answers and the line is supposed to be right in the blank. I, I, I like how you are multifaceted in the understanding that people can have more than one interpretation and you help lead them to every single one of them. But I think your question is something that you just answered. In one way or another, Judas does not determine our destiny, mm -hmm. um, but rather the Son of God does. And I'm able to comprehend everything that is misunderstood mm -hmm. about what your enemy said about you. I, I know that they tried to trade you and sell you out. You said throw under the bus, but I know them to be the bus drivers and pass you or back over you. I, I know them to not be Judas, but be the devil. Entering Peter to come and pretend like they didn't know you when they didn't need you, but only wanted to crucify you when they was around you because people connected to you could help you carry the cross of the weight that you had on you for them. See, I, I, I know that my fate does not lie in the hand of the enemy. And I can prove that to you today because he said the keys are in my hands. In my hands. In my that same hands that they put the nails in, now he went from nailed to carrying keys. Mm -hmm. And I've only come on today to reassure somebody, if you look at my last year, then you'll be able to see where I was taken off of the cross where I crucified me. I had nails in my hands that stipend me. I had nails in my feet that stopped me from walking into my destiny. But see, somewhere along on the way in June, and in June, somewhere around the 16th, God decided to save me. And so he came down from wherever he would be and would come and pull the nails out of my hands and my feet. And I know that Judas does not determine my destiny because God spoke life over me what the enemy wanted to take me. You, you, you got to know if we keep subscribing him to our fate, then we'll forfeit God's fortune over our future. And I know him to be a safety guard where he'll leave the 99 and come and save the one me. I know him to be an avenger, where even in the battlefield of the valley of the shadow, I know him to be a rod and a staff for me. I know God to be an inheritor, where he'll make sure that every place that my ancestor forfeited to tell me that God will show up to reveal to me that everything that was promised to Abraham is still belongs to me. I know God to not leave my fate in the hands of the enemy. I know him not to. He said to Jeremiah, don't say it. Don't say you're too little. Don't say you're too small. Don't say you're not big enough. And for God's sakes, don't let their faces scare you. So in all terms, in all sense, I thank God for Judas today. I thank God for my Judases. I thank him for yours. Judas, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful that you would be close enough to hurt that it hurt. I'm thankful that you walked away. That kiss and left. Enemies turn foes, but I'm thankful. This is bad when you realize that they weren't your friend, mm -hmm. but they were as God's fulfillment to pushing you to your destiny. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful for every Judas, every Peter. I'm thankful for every Simon. 
thankful for it every my failures every time it's I'm thankful for it every Zabidi, every Zacchaeus. Mary and Martha who carried me, prayed for me who judged me and loved me who fed me and pushed me who doubted me and then helped me I'm thankful for every one of them because it helped me get to where I needed to be and I know my fate is not in the hands of Judas nor the enemy nor any of those who love me or are jealous of me. Mm -hmm. I know that because when I'm done, I'm done. I know that because the cross couldn't kill him. Prove it, preacher. No man takes it, but I freely Give it. Father, forgive them. For every place I hurt me, forgive me. For every person that I would put above you, forgive them. For every place I would make a friend God, and they would fail, and I blame you and not them and myself, forgive them. Forgive every relationship that I hurt. Every person that I thought I was helping me, but I hurt them. Every ill word, he says, Father, forgive them. He says, if he forgives you, you're right. Today, I promise you, you won't have to wait for heaven, but you can be with me in paradise right now. And somewhere on the 17th, I woke up, not in hell, not in habit. I woke up in paradise. Prove it, preacher. They said you couldn't, but you did it. They said you wouldn't, but you got it. They, they said they won't. And that's fine, because they didn't. But God did. And, and for anybody who doubted that my hands couldn't hold it, shh, I got my hands on it. If anybody who doubted my feet couldn't walk into it, that I'm able to see it because my feet walked into it. I'm able to breathe here. Oh, oh, oh the air is thicker at the top. And everybody can't handle this status of uh, stratosphere. But you got to know when God destined you to be in the upper estrelons, in the higher atmosphere, echelons. You know, heavens yes. in the clouds that everybody can't breathe here. But he said, if I be lifted, then I'll draw whoever lifts me with me. And so I know on today that we're able to stand here on mark of anniversary one year. Thank you, God. And there has not been a day there has not been a day where God has not lifted me for lifting him. Yeah. Some days are hard. It, it really is. Some days I don't want to. I may not preach it, may not record it. But every day that I lift him, he elevates us. So today I lift him up. I end it with lifting him up. You got to learn how to lift. If you ain't learned this past year, I'm going to teach you something today. Learn how to lift. When your enemies step on you, lift them. When they talk bad about you, don't want you, hate you, don't like you, won't speak to you, won't text you, won't come see you, but want to talk about you, come here. When, 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 when they said you would never find another job that you would leave and fall on your butt that all your dreams would come crashing down that's crazy don't do that let's just lift him we, we're not even talking about him anymore just lift him when, when, when the power of grace is all over you but folk act like they can't see it next to you you say lift him 
Because when everybody else gives up on you, know that God will put you in connection with people who won't give up on you. Just lift him. He says to get it off of your hands. He'll take it from your heart. Just lift him. You know, many times you're holding it. Sometimes you got to let go of it and lift him. And you can't lift while your hands are weighted. To cast all your cares onto me. And I'll give unto you. And someday I laid down, but the next day I got up. Not, not me, but he who was greater in me. And that same power, that same authority, that same omnipotent anointing. He says, I give unto you the greater works for this you be able to do. To him that believe. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for you. Thank you. God, I thank you for the change. Yes. Thank you for the mission. Thank you for the healing. Yes. Thank you for your vision 6 and 10. Yes. That God is not mocked. Mm -hmm. God keeps on. Thank you for not letting us reap what we sow. Mm -hmm. 